demonstrate innovative and creative high academic growth um, and a student population that is distinctly more diverse than neighboring home schools. Okay, so those are basically the three criteria that last one we've got a couple of them grouped together in terms of what the school would in uh, an ideal sense look like. Again, we have not distinguished between partial, full, or any other themes. This is high level uh, what we would expect to see from all of our magnet programs regardless. So it's really setting that, that bar higher than what we would have in our operations. So Scott, help me understand the, the number for you. Okay. This is one or more of the following. So separating out one being the student population that is distinctly more diverse than neighboring home schools. Help me understand what kind of a magnet school that is. Well, well, yeah, so, so I mean, obviously it's, it's easy to say, well, it's a STEM or a STEAM or it's a language academy or something like that. So it's going to do something different than what you would find in a comprehensive school. So for STEM, using that example, um, is there an infusion of technology that goes well beyond what we would see? So that's the first one. Yeah. That's the first one. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, that's that's right. The third one. Just oh, the third, third one. Yeah. Since we're saying one or more, yeah. so if that was on the third one or more. So a pot school population that is distinctly more diverse than neighboring home schools. So we've had home school, or we've had magnet programs, even to this day, historically more in the center part of our and those schools have been, the home schools anyway, have been far less diverse. Oftentimes, very high percentage of non-white, whether that be African American, uh, Hispanic, or a combination of that. So since those magnet programs are located in those, in those areas, it would draw not only from that immediate area, but from the, uh, the entire county, so that they would be more reflective of the overall county uh, diversity. Okay, so do we, I mean, I'm asking this question because of what the film is. So basically, it feels to me like you're saying, okay, we ought to have a magnet school that exists simply for the desire of individuals who want their child to be in a diverse environment when they go to school. Do we have such a thing? Solely based on that. Not solely based on that. <laughs> <laughs> but this says before. We but this is all, you've got to read numbers one and two yeah. above right. two. Let's, let's move all together. Yeah. Keep, keep home schools and magnet schools up all up there to go. So you've got to be magnet number three accommodation yeah. magnet number one. Yeah. So, so you have to have to high all achievements, all narrow achievement gap. And then number three is one of those items, one or more of the following items. Well, you know, clearly academically distinct, we think we can all point to that. Um, demonstrated innovation in creating high academic growth. Um, you know, again, that goes to the theme, exactly. And then, and or a student population distinctly more diverse than the neighboring home schools. So, um, so basically, you could have a magnet that is one, two, and three, eight. Yeah. And right. Would be, and they'd be meeting the. And right. would be no right. more diverse than. Right. Right. That's correct. Yeah. All together. Okay. Yeah. So, but, uh, so what, I understand what you're saying. Looking back, that the track record of consistently high student achievement, track record of narrowing achievement gaps. Yeah. And the student population is distinctly more diverse than those in homes. Now, those are three criteria, and I don't see the magnet story that we can point to that solely rests on those three items. I'm just asking a question. I mean, I'm not, 
I think it goes back well, to the well, was saying. Let's, let's look at a Collins Wood for an example. I was going to say Walmart yeah. tradition. Yeah. Elizabeth tradition is the one. Uh, Elizabeth tradition may be more than Mark Park traditional being more. Well, they're both they're both more diverse than the neighboring schools. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's and, what drove this item. And, those two and, schools. And there and there were a bunch of people at the last time we did this that didn't think those were academically distinct or anything else. They were just good, solid education. We didn't need them. Mm -hmm. But they also were by that time the most mm -hmm. some of the more diverse schools in the district. Or reflected the district wide average. Reflected the district wide average that, that it was then, and they may not anymore. Um, so their program is basically what you would, in the years before that, that, almost every school would have that program. But it may be a little bit more leadership. And the traditional schools came about at the same time we, we brought in open schools. Which gave what really was a more, uh, to use a word that probably was never used, a more rigid thing with traditional schools and a more open environment. I have a daughter went through open education, it was absolutely perfect for her. I mean, it couldn't have been better mm -hmm. for her. I have another daughter who went through IB, and that could have been that structure. <laughs> if she hadn't had that, no telling where she'd been, you know? And it was just amazing the, 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 the way it fit. For our kids, but we don't we, we don't have open anymore, and that would that would make the cut into our magnet program. Which ultimately, we cut it out, and about the same time, wasn't it? I think we cut out the open program yes. about the same time. I think uh, actually it was a few years before that. Yeah, a few years before that. Two years before that. Traditional open schools early was open school in 1970. Yeah, one of the first open or the first magnet program. And it's called an optional. It was an optional school in that day. It wasn't called a magnet for the magnet. I don't know if our superintendent could read this this way, but when I read one and two under magnets, I think, why isn't that up under homeschool? <laughs> I mean, it's like a big contradiction we've got going here. Participate in writing this. We, we wrote it. We, we wrote all it. Had that, <laughs> it, it, it. We all had that we, conversation then. So, so yeah. if homeschool is our first priority, why aren't they the ones consistently with high student achievement and a track record of improvement achievement gaps? I think we contradict ourselves. Yeah, I think we do too. <laughs> Which means this needs to work. Yeah, because we're. Good. I mean, if we're we need to be good. If I was a superintendent, wouldn't it? I'd say you guys are giving me mixed signals here. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think our ultimate goal is that every school be a high quality, high performing, academically achieving. You know, that's that, that's our ultimate goal. In which case, all of this language, will, except for maybe the diversity, will be moved. The but, dilemma is, it's how do you students? to achieve that goal. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if Eric, if the thinking was that home schools are number one, we all know that, we're going to pour every resource that we have in our schools. If we're going to have magnets, they better at least do yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but, but we're telling our superintendent that if you're going to propose a magnet school, they got to meet one or two. Well, how do you meet one and two without pouring resources into it? And yet, we really want our resources poured more into our home schools because that's where three quarters of our students go. Right. Home schools in order to. That's the argument. That's the argument. Magnet schools crane. <clears throat> students and teachers. Mm -hmm. And we can control the population. And we don't overcrowd them. But all those other things we layer into our home schools and they got all that to overcome. And yet they're our first priority. And that's, that's been the biggest dilemma. I don't know how to solve it. All right. Anything else on <laughs> magnet? That's good. Great.
when you look at it, I mean, Magnet is trying to bring in people to support, students to study a particular thing. Um, you know, maybe it's time to say we have achieved, we're trying to achieve a certain level with the Magnet schools, and guess what? That's still in the home schools. Yeah, the one dilemma there is our Magnet schools and programs that we offer are our best. I think offense against charter schools if there is some competition there. And without magnet schools, man, we'd be decimated. I think in the charter. Because what how does the charter school open? They follow Scott, they find out what our most popular program is. Voila. They can even go to our website. Don't even need to call me. Our first lottery results. Wait for first thing to look at. So so does magnet if you take one and two and and consider it more homeschool aligned. Does number three down here still align with magnets? One being that they're academically distinct. Uh, I guess they're getting into the, to the academic growth piece in a second. And then the diversity, student diversity piece. Does that make sense when it remains under the magnet section? Well, some would say if every school was more diverse, we probably wouldn't have problems with having a good reason to be that. Right. So, and I think that's, that's the big issue. Mm -hmm. we, we've got to figure out a way to do And that's, again, how do we do that with student assignment in a way that does not uh, give a new engine of reality for charter schools? And really works. <laughs> it takes where they're going, where they need to go. And there's, there's a lot of fear around it from various directions. We'll lose students to private schools, or new private schools, or new charter schools. If we try to do that, we try to make every school diverse. Um, I thought, but I think that becomes the issue. Okay. Ability and predictability. All right, we're in the page two. <laughs> Ability and predictability. So at a high level.